So we are here to discuss the modern athlete and voices. So I ask you, Paul, first. I'm too far away from you. I'm going to sit right. up here. I'm going to sit okay. up here. Okay, here we go. We've done this many, many times. Yeah. What does that mean to you? Yeah. So I, I would say, first of all, like everyone being here is indicative of, of what a modern athlete is today, which is far more than, than just being a, a player on field or on court. And I think, you know, we have legends like Joe Montana, uh, like Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, folks that transcended their sport into business. So the, the, the likelihood of that happening prior to today's kind of modern culture of media and technology has always been there through the virtues of networking and, and curiosity primarily. But what we have is this proliferation of social media where for the first time as athletes beginning in 2008, we had a chance to connect directly to our audience and create content and tell stories and build relationships with them and, and do so on a daily basis, which is valuable in, in, in various ways, but that never existed before. We were limited to linear television, print, radio, telling our story on behalf or a sponsor of ours so now all of a sudden, we have one of the most valuable um, um, forms of, of communication or how brands think of customers uh, right at our disposal, and that's really valuable. So athletes that uh, have an audience that they communicate with regularly, um, athletes that have mentors, Andre talked about it in the, in, in the opening segment this morning, athletes that are actively networking, athletes that are using their ambition that have made them successful on court and on field, uh, to, to drive their you know, level of education beyond uh, high school or college and, and make something for that. The last thing I'll say uh, before Promise? Baron, yeah, before Baron uh, <laughs> takes over um, is with, with, his that clock over there? with his enterprises, you're always busting my <laughs> <laughs> Before he takes over is, is that I, I, I genuinely get sick of the, of the notion that athletes are investing in an opportunity uh, that, that they can create for themselves beyond their career. What happens if they get cut? What happens if they retire? Uh, they'll, they'll go broke. All this like stereotype associated with athletes being dumb jocks, et cetera, et cetera. Like, what we have is this competitive flair and this ambition that got us to this point that is a utility that can take us uh, far above and beyond what, frankly, like most people in the general population are, are capable of, whether you choose to be an operator or investor. Um, so I don't think about it as, what am I going to do when I retire or if I get injured and stop playing? It's like leveraging the opportunity that, that we all have in front of us and, and making something of it. Yeah, Baron, you've known for a long time you have a platform because yeah. you're an athlete. But now it's about platforms. You're creating your own. There's Laura Froelich of Twitter right there. Raise your hand. Baron, wave hello. hello. What would Muhammad Ali's Twitter handle be? What would Muhammad Ali's Twitter handle be? Give me a guess. Best thing in the world for you, right? Can you imagine Ali in his prime in today's world? Talk about an athlete with a platform, and you're trying to do it. Uh, you know, I think that, you know, you look at somebody as um, polarizing as Muhammad Ali, and, you know, back in his days, he was getting locked up for the things that he was saying. And, you know, just to Paul's point, you know, the, the communication and the evolution of the athlete now to social media, right, allows you to pretty much, like, ideate and curate who you want to be, right? So if Muhammad Ali came out today, right, and, you know, like we all say, anybody, all, all these dudes, they just as old as me, shit. Um, you know, like, oh, if I was in high school and I had social media, I have 10 million followers by now. And, you know, because you actually know who you are, you know, we've known who we have been for a long time, but we never had the tools. And so now these younger guys, they see us at tech conferences. They see us investing in companies. They see us starring in TV shows and um, playing basketball and investing and doing things. So this younger generation, they already have the tools. Now they're starting to code. They're starting to take it to a whole nother level because, you know, social media and just the evolution of athletes like Muhammad Ali, you know, um, that transcendence has allowed us to continue to exercise who we are. And so now in the marketplace, we can actually articulate better than an agent, better than anybody in our family, who we are, who we want to be, and we can actually have the control and the power in our brand 
by just posting stuff. On you Facebook. had the platform of the NBA, mm -hmm. but every athlete in the four majors, when I'm hanging around Paul and they meet him, they say, that guy right there is a rock star. What makes you a rock star in a world of the modern athlete and voices? You have a plan. So uh, that, um, thanks for saying that. I'm humbled, and I'm certainly not. Um, you know, the, hey, you know they hey, say hey, You hey, said hey, it. Hey, yeah, say, it's not the first yeah. time I've heard it. Lacrosse is small. So, uh, so what's the difference between a lacrosse player and an NBA so, player, an NFL player? What do you have to do to... to so, sure. So, honestly, the, one of the biggest differences, lacrosse still in its nascent stage as a professional game, is that we're, pri we're, we're primarily part-time with, with our job. So, I have the luxury of a, having a lot more bandwidth during the week than most of my peers do, who are grinding in the NBA and in the NFL. Now, I still do my daily training and uh, nutrition, but, like, I don't have to report uh, to one Patriot Way at Gillette Stadium from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. every day. So I have dedicated what you guys are doing in your off season pretty much year round because of the part time nature. So I, I don't take that for granted. And so when, when I get those comparisons, especially talking with, with all of you, like I, I feel that I have that opportunity now. I get paid like shit to play pro lacrosse. So, you know, definitely don't, uh, I guess I would say I'm, I'm envious of, of the opportunity that, that's been created and what you guys have done in basketball. But uh, the, the recipe for me is, is, you know, we've talked about social media, is, is being active, understanding who your audience is, the stories that you want to tell that are authentic to you. Um, I think... You can't fake it. Yeah. You, you can't gotta fake it. You've got to be honest, it. man. You've yeah. got to be honest. You, go, you can't fake the, it. Yeah. The, the conversation I get from a lot of people, and, and this is across sports, is, is like you see someone who does it well, and you say, well, you know, Steph, for example, like he, I have a pretty good relationship with him, and, and uh, we had a conversation around, because I vlog on my YouTube channel, and he doesn't want to vlog. It's like, I don't want to hold a camera and, and talk to it, but, but the point being is like there, there's no blueprint for how we're each telling our stories. For some of you, it's, it's like getting a, a content creator around you that's capturing you in practice. Like watching, watching someone hit 33s in a row is viral content. So then it comes down to what's, what's the content, what's the narrative you want to tell, and then how often are you telling it, right? He created Slick, and he's got you know, your, one of your business partners here that was recording on a conversation we were having behind the scenes. Uh, you know, Let's say so, stands for? Sports, lifestyle, and culture. So you, you want to give voice yeah, I, to other yeah, athletes' me, voices. Yeah, for me, I think my platform exists in creating a platform, right? And so I'm looking at, you know, every athlete. I'm looking at their brand. I'm looking at, you know, uh, you know their DNA. And what I want to do is I want to present the platform and say, hey, you want to be a producer? There you go. You love lifestyle and travel and things? Here you go. And I think that, one, it, it should come from us. Right, because we have the ideas, we have the we have the capabilities and the know-how, and we are the most honest. Yeah. Right, it's we live in a world that you know kind of you know penetrates into our ecosystem, and then. Can I challenge you on that? You say we are the most honest as compared to who? As far as, as far as our content, as far as like sports, you know, as, um, sports stars. Period. Right, because we don't have a record label or Hollywood you know, funding who, we, who you think you're supposed to be, right? And so for us, we spend our money, right, portraying and articulating who we want to be in our lifestyle. When you hear brand, athletes as brand, is that BS to you? Yes. Okay. I mean, because, you know, not, not, not everyone is, you have to figure out what a brand is, right? And not everybody is a brand. David Falk told me only Jordan had a brand. Like the LeBron has if a brand, capital, but yeah. everybody else who says they have a it, brand. It all depends on, on how you define it. But what, what I'll say to add on top of what, what Baron was talking about around honesty is that you know, what, what we get as athletes, and you could say that with entertainers as well, <clears throat> is one of the only like. But aren't athletes entertainers? Like, why do you separate yeah. the two? Well, athletes are. You know, just being, you know, there's yeah. actors and actresses that aren't going to say they're athletes. And, yeah. you know, there's some crossover folks here that they've been a in different film, industry. But, you know, this is so. a, it's a different way you get paid, a different way you get marketed, 
you know, in a different way you, you know, people handle you. So it's, it's a big difference. We are entertainers. We're very entertaining. And I think that's why you're calling him a rock star because of the evolution of the athlete. Now the athlete is dictating if the song is hot. The athlete is dictating if the movie is going to sell, right? Seems it's to me like you could monetize that influence. Absolutely. That, so to give me your steps with your platform, what do you, we'll come back, but what, what do you see the people on your platform? What do you want them to do? What do you want them to know? What do you want them to create? Uh, create culture create culturally relevant content, content that can be sold mainstream and distributed, content that brands can be a part of and align themselves, and content that's honest, that comes from the person. Yep. And what we know for Slick is, you know, we have a full-fledged full production company behind us, and so we could put the right people with the right people to make the best thing, right? What's not out there? Tell me what you envision. What's not out um, there that you think the world needs? Well, uh, I would say... How do I describe? There's never, the bad boys, they never get a chance to tell their story, right? So when you look at the guys who had the best relationship with the media, they're usually the dudes that are the most polarizing or crazy or, you know, some kind of crazy. Make it story. tangible for us. Give me some names. Um, like Ron Artest. Okay. Right? You take Ron Artest, you take Steven Jackson. Um, you know, uh, is that their own fault, though? I mean, no, they, they do it, have cameras in their but faces they don't, every day. They need to tell their side of the story. Right. And so the NBA would never tell that. Right. Fox is only going to tell it one way. Uh, when you when I say the word the gel blazers, you guys think of it the way it was reported. But we want to know how they really were and what their side of the story. And that's what Slick is, is to give the athlete the opportunity to speak their truth or the real truth that happened in the moment. I go back to MTV Cribs. It seems like the first time you understood that people were thirsting for more. They wanted that peek behind the curtain. What car do you drive? What's your house look like? They wanted more. Well, well that's where the NBA has done such a great job is, is telling stories and narratives of, of their athletes. The benefit of the NBA versus most helmet sports, as we all know, uh, is that we get to see the athlete's face yep. and draw a connection there. Same thing in soccer. The other thing that the NBA has to its advantage that uh, Adam Silver talks about is players play on both sides of the court. And they're always on, so there's not as much substitution. Is there, is there also the advantage of you're basically, and I, I don't mean literally, but you're basically naked? Like football, you got a helmet. I can't yeah, see these guys. Sucks. I don't know. Yeah, well, lacrosse, the, the type of shorts they're wearing yeah. today. But yeah, yeah, well, you had totally. some <laughs> tight, so, tight ones. So anyway, I, I, I have been hearing, you know, that, that there is this notion that, that ratings are dipping through television, and we've heard a few people say it with the NFL. But if you, like, zoom out and look at consumption trends across social media in particular, and uh, Ted Leonsis says, I believe it was on your podcast, um, that the, the best form of original programming right now and will be is sports because it's live and you don't know what's going to happen. Um, and some of your favorite characters are on screen. Um, but, but if you zoom out, the NFL may be declining television rating, but if you look at total yes. eyeballs on social yeah. media, <laughs> it's way it up. Yeah. The NBA is up on television, which is unique. Can I use and, the buzzword? Way up You're talking about engagement. Talking about, yeah, just talking about eyeballs on product. Yep. Uh, but, but what matters and, and what, what the, again, back to my point around the NBA and, and what sports are really trying to tap into and telling the story of, of their best athletes is that you have a good product, but that's not enough. People need to identify with a narrative. So Baron was talking about your heels and your baby faces, your villains. Like, they're, they're required. Whether you're the WWE and you manufacture it, or whether you lean into Ron Artest and, yeah, like, he's created a platform. Your story? Ron. Your story? Yeah, yeah. You know like, I mean? at some point, I'm going to have to turn heel because, like, it's just going to get boring, <laughs> yeah. right? And so I try, you know, in, in many cases, I already am. But um, so, so, like, the, the narration around the player. The, the point that I was trying to draw on, on, on the unique position that we're in is that social media inherently is uh, created this like vicious bubble that we all live in, where we follow the people that share our ideologies, we follow the people that look, act, walk, and talk like us. And so all that content continues to funnel. And this is just all of our experiences primarily, except for athletes, because athletes are, 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 are this, this kind of idol for many people where they're fans of them and they follow them. And then when an athlete like Barron comes out, and speaks about social inequalities and social justices and what's important to him, that hits both sides of the spectrum. And so the power that we have athlete, as athletes to speak with purpose 
and talk about what's meaningful in our lives is a position that very few others are in. So when you talk about like being honest and stuff, that has a more meaningful impact because no matter what your political ideology is, no matter how your social justices fall, you're going to follow Baron, you're going to follow Andre, you're going to follow Katie, you're going to follow the, the athletes that you like to watch on screen, and their message will get to you. And in some cases, people get pissed off because they don't believe in it, in, in what you're saying. But just having that opportunity to speak your truth is something that's unique to sports. And we, and we come in contact with so many different people, right? When you look at, you know, these guys, uh, these basketball players here, you know, each and every one of these guys has their own documentary, right? They're their own documentary. And not only that, they all have five or six compelling stories, whether it's the shoot them out bang, bang dude that they knew, or it was, you know, the teacher who saved their lives, who, you know, taught them their ABCs and one, two threes and so when you start to you know look at the athlete and look at look at their scope of living right and their and and what they've been through from the time that they've had to get there once they get there they made it now you can actually start to look at their timeline and see all the people that they touch and I know for us we we have to right so we have to do good we have to do charity. We have to do community service because that's a part of our fan base is to be able to touch these people. So I think that's where that honesty comes out, where we're trying to bring, where we're looking is that pipeline. Where are those stories? At its core, how important then is it to be a really good player? Does the fan require you to be an all-star, you to no. be on a winning team. No. Does that help amplify the message? Can you be the ninth guy? Yes, absolutely. And, okay. Absolutely. Um, I remember when I, uh, maybe like four or five years ago, a guy named Paul Shirley, he played on the Phoenix Suns. Were you on the Suns when Paul Shirley played? And he was the 12th dude, and he started blogging. And he became one of like the most, and that was way before people was like blogging. And he became one of the most popular people because he took us he inside on the he beach. Took, he, right? took us in, he took he us the inside best the game. Scene, yeah, he has the best scene in the house with the best perspective and the most honest stories. And it's compelling and it's funny. And he has a fan base because now his fan base, his fan base, everybody has some color into, you know, uh, the life inside the team. I'm just curious, when you look at LeBron, he took Shut Up and Dribble and Pivot. Yeah. And now that's the name of the show. You look at, do you, what's the reaction to what he's been able to create and what he'll be able to sustain after basketball? Well, I, I was fully supportive of it and was pushing their message through my channels as well. Um, because that's, again, going back to my, my former point around the vehicle that athletes have to uh, share their story, uh, to be activists around things that actually matter beyond the game, um, and, and to have an amplified message, right, which LeBron and, and many of us do. Um, so what, what, what we have, too, as well, and, is, and, and Jalen was talking about this morning, is, is this, like, shared brotherhood, this community of athletes. We've always said that, you know, uh, or at least when I grew up, athletes would tend to feel uncomfortable any, in anything outside of a press conference or a game. Um, and, and when you see another athlete at an event like this, you immediately kind of relax because you, you know that experience and, and some of the stereotypes and then some of the things that are said. So um, them stepping in and saying this isn't right and, and you know, one of the, if not the, the largest athlete on the planet uh, getting behind that, giving all of us the, the ability to show our support and, and rake, make real movement uh, was, was, I think, one of the most meaningful things that's happened over the past year. We've seen athletes make a lot of mistakes, Baron. How do you prevent the mistake? Can you prevent the mistake? Uh, no. No, you, you know. You, you, Is that part of being honest? No, you, yeah, you, you grow and you learn from your mistakes. I mean, we don't see, you know, Thing pictures, you know what I mean? Some dudes are taking pictures of themselves when they're supposed to, you know what I mean? And That seems like learn. a simple do not do. I mean, do. hey, 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 dude, <laughs> don't, that don't do it. That seems a simple like, do I, not yeah. do. And I got two kids. I tell my son, I'll do something, and he goes right and does it. So, you know, it's... it's <laughs> Look at the comparison you just made. <laughs> we, we, I mean, it's the, same, it's the same thing. I mean, it's, you know, it is, but it's innocent, though. You know, when you think about it, like... He innocently made a mistake. Here's another. It's he another. Back from yeah, that. it's another crossover. We, we're sitting here talking about the the athlete tech summit and how so much of what we're building as athletes mirrors what entrepreneurs do in the startup space. And one of our the previous speakers talked about like what we know is certain 
with a startup is that you're going to make mistakes. And same thing with athletes. Yep. And I think the best CEOs and athletes are honest and, and, and talk openly about those mistakes, it's something that athletes used to never do. You know, we can see, and I challenge all of us, and I challenge myself to do this more, but like, it's, it's easy to post a shot on Instagram after we win a game, and you lose, and you're like, no, oh, staying off Instagram. Right, but but someone, a leader, whether you're in sports or business, that's that's vulnerable enough to, to show not only hey I made a mistake and do something about it, or hey we're winning and not gloat like that. That really is pervasive into the community and powerful. That thing's flashing, but I would like to give everybody one. Anybody have one question? Did anybody have a question? Yeah, right here. So uh, for Baron, uh, with the so for Baron with your your platform slick. Do you see yourself partnering with, like, say, Netflix or Amazon uh, to create some of this content, or is it primarily going to be uh, through your through your uh, through your own? Yeah, so I, I would say um, definitely partner with Netflix. We definitely want to partner with Twitter. We definitely want to partner with, you know, Hulu. Did you hear that, Laura? We definitely want to partner partner with Fox. Is Rich all we still here? Want to Rich, partner you around for Amazon? The MB Raise your hand. The MBPA. <laughs> um, no, but for us, I think you look at us as you look at us as, you know, creative, like a creative agency. So we create the IP, we mine the IP, we find it, and then we'll produce it. And looking at our platform, let's be first to proof of concept and then let's sell it to a Netflix or something like that. So then, you know, I've learned through content as an athlete, like don't go spend $20,000 on the script, then got to spend $15,000 on the script, and then you wait a year and it never gets produced. Let's just proof of concept, two to three minutes, five to 10 minutes, and, you know, a brand is going to come around and love it anyway because it should be dope, and then we'll sell it to Netflix. Can't wait for these two to do something together. Be we are. We, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Done. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Appreciate it.